Hi guys, welcome to this video series on accounting for IGCSE students. We have seen how transactions are recorded and then classified and then finally the balancing of the accounts. At the end of the accounting period, after all the accounts are balanced, the next step is to summarize the entire accounting data for the period. Summary of transactions can be done by preparing useful statements that can help the user understand business performance quickly. One of these statements is the trial balance. A trial balance is a statement showing, as on a particular date, a list of all the accounts having either a debit balance or a credit balance. This is the format of a trial balance. There are three columns here, details column, debit column and the credit column. There is no date column in a trial balance as the trial balance is always prepared on a particular date, which is usually written on the top. The details column will have all the names of the accounts having either a debit balance or a credit balance. If an account is having a debit balance, the balance is written in the debit column of the trial balance. Or if an account is having a credit balance, the balance will be recorded in the credit column. Accounts that have nil balance are not written in the trial balance. Let us try making a trial balance for Andy's business on 31st January from a previous example. So we shall consider each account one by one and all accounts having either a debit balance or a credit balance will be recorded here. Let us start with the cash account. In the cash account, debit column was greater than the credit column by 61,500. Hence cash account has a debit balance of $61,500. Then we have the capital account. Capital account has a credit balance of 100,000. So in the details column, we write the capital account. And since capital account has a credit balance, we write the amount in the credit column. Continuing further, furniture account has a debit balance of 8,000. Bank account has a debit balance of 14,250. Then we have the salary account. Rent account, debit balance of 6000. Toy store account, which is a creditor of Andy's business. Toy store account has a credit balance. Hence, amount will be written in the credit column. Drawings account, there is a debit balance in the drawings account of $5,000. So, $5,000 in the debit column. Purchases account, there's a debit balance of $8,000. Sales account, there's a credit balance of $3,500. Purchase returns account. Credit balance of 200. And finally, the sales returns account with a debit balance of 250. In the double entry bookkeeping, transactions are recorded in such a way that the debit is always equal to credit. In other words, for every debit effect given, there is an equal credit effect in some other account. Hence, it follows that the total of all debit balances equal to the total of all credit balances. So, if we take the total of two columns of the trial balance, we get $107,000 in both the columns. Any disagreement in the total indicate that one or more errors have been committed in the accounting process. So the following can be recognized as the advantages of preparing a trial balance. It provides a summary of business transactions that took place during the period. For example, in a trial balance, it is clear that the salary of 4000 has been paid or goods to the value of 3500 has been sold, etc. Second, it helps to check the arithmetical accuracy of the accounting records. For example, let's say when I'm balancing our toy store account, we incorrectly balanced it as 4,300 instead of 3,300. Then when the trial balance is prepared, the two sides will not agree and this gives a hint that an error has been made. It also helps to prepare financial statements of the business. The trial balance helps to prepare the income statement and the balance sheet of the business because summary of each account is easily available. From examination point of view, the examiners do not provide with the detailed ledger accounts in order to complete the trial balance. The question may just specify the balance in all the accounts without specifying if it is a debit balance or a credit balance. We can apply a rules of debit and credit and then identify the type of balance for all the accounts. All the assets, expenses and drawings account will have debit balances. Hence, amount should be written in the debit column of the trial balance for all these accounts. Whereas for all the liabilities, income and capital, the amount should be written in the credit column of the trial balance. So in order to prepare a trial balance correctly, one should be able to clearly distinguish between various categories of accounts. If you think that the video is useful, please like the video and share it with others. Kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel to receive notifications when more videos will be uploaded. If you have any feedback regarding the video or you have any doubt regarding this topic, please comment below the video or you may WhatsApp me or email me on the details mentioned.